Please like and subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. I didn't think much of the letter when it arrived. I looked at the plain white envelope from the blood bank and I figured it was probably just a thank you for donating cord blood from the birth of my first child a few weeks earlier. I figured it would probably say something like, thank you for your life-saving donation, or maybe even Ijoma Oluo, local hero. <laughs> but I opened the letter and the first line jumped out at me and bold print, it said, this is not about AIDS or HIV. Now, it was 2001, so we were still really in the AIDS crisis, but I really hadn't thought it would be about AIDS or <laughs> HIV. But now I was like, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? But, you know, I kept reading, and it, it wasn't about AIDS or HIV. In simple text, the letter informed me that the blood I had donated had tested positive for hepatitis C and I should contact my doctor for more information. That was about it. I held the letter and I was like, what the hell is hepatitis C? But I figured it probably wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, if it was, someone would call, right? I did make an appointment with my doctor, like the letter had said, and by the time my appointment came around, my doctor was able to confirm what my own internet research had shown. Hepatitis C is a blood-borne infection affecting millions of Americans. Vietnam veterans, IV drug users, people co-infected with AIDS and HIV, people who had received blood transfusions before testing became available in the mid-90s, healthcare workers. It attacks your liver. It causes cirrhosis, liver cancer, and often death. So, I mean, I guess it was a big deal. I was sent to a specialist for a barrage of tests. I waited two agonizing days to find out if my newborn baby had been infected with this disease that I had just discovered I had. I held my mom's hand as I sat through a liver biopsy so painful that I went into shock. I was 20 years old. I was still a baby myself, and I had this brand new baby, and I was trying to figure out why my world had just turned completely upside down. After all of the tests, I sat alone with the specialist and she reconfirmed my diagnosis. Yes, I had this disease. I had probably had it my entire life. She said it was most likely I had gotten it from a blood transfusion shortly after my premature birth. But there was nothing to be done. Treatment at the time was really expensive, often more deadly than the disease itself, and only had about a 20% chance of working. I wanted to argue with her. You know, I had gone through all this pain, all these tests, and I wanted to be cured, but she cut me off and she said, do you have anyone to take care of you? Anyone to take care of your child? Do you have anyone who can support you financially if you can't work? And I had to shake my head no. I had a new baby and I was getting ready to leave a bad marriage. I had never felt as alone as I did at that moment. Well then, I recommend waiting, she said. I mean, there's likely to be better treatments down the road and I don't think you'll die before then. <laughs> I was sent home to deal with my new reality and I dealt with it the only way I know how. See, I'm a talker, I am a walking overshare. So <laughs> I just started telling everyone. I was telling my friends, I was telling my family, I was telling old like high school classmates, I was telling my coworkers, I was telling my neighbors. And the response I got was confusing. It was underwhelming to say the least. But I'm stubborn and also I really can't take a hint. So <laughs> I just kept talking about it. One day, a coworker pulled aside a close teammate of mine and he said, you have to tell Ijoma to stop telling people about her Hep C. It's not something she wants people to know about. It's a disease for dirty people. See, you know, Hep C is a disease you get if you use dirty needles or have risky sex. If you get it, it's because you deserve it and you deserve the shame that goes along with it. I stopped 
talking to people about it. For the next decade or so, I lived in fear. Fear that this disease would pull me away from my precious babies, but also fear that I would be found out and I would be cast out. Not only would I die, I would die alone. This fear was reconfirmed every time I went to a medical provider. When I would disclose my status to doctors, nurses, even dentists, they would all give me the same look, and a few would even say it. You don't look like someone with hep C. But what they were saying was, is I didn't look like a dirty person. I didn't look like someone who made really bad choices. But they looked at me like that afterwards. And I wanted to shout, not me, no, I'm a, I'm a good person. I got this from a blood transfusion. I'm a really good person. But I had never before used someone's drug history to determine whether or not they were a good person. And as a godless feminist, I know I certainly never used anyone's sex history for that. So I wasn't about to start just to save myself a little pain and reinforce that stigma. I really, really resented the impulse. For a few days in 2010, everyone was talking about Georgia Congressman Hank Johnson. He was talking to a Navy admiral about the possibility of sending additional troops to Guam. And he theorized that perhaps the added weight from the troops might be enough to capsize the tiny island. <laughs> People shared video of this and they were laughing hysterically, but I wasn't laughing, I was terrified. I mean, y'all, I love laughing at Congress as much as any other American. <laughs> But it had been revealed shortly after this video went viral that Johnson had long been suffering from hep C, and it had been affecting his speech and cognitive abilities. So I sat there wondering, would that be me? Would I be left with the inability to effectively communicate and be mocked and laughed at by my peers? I sat alone in my apartment in the middle of the night and just watched that video over and over and over, and I cried. A few years later, it was announced that a new, safer, and more effective treatment for hep C was being developed. I set up Google Alerts, I did a bunch of research. I finally had some secret hope that maybe I could be cured before anybody knew I had this. As soon as it was more widely available, I made an appointment with my doctor. I was sent to a different specialist this time for the same tests and largely the same result. Yes, I still was sick. I was more sick than I had been, but not very sick. This disease takes decades to kill. But also, like before, there was nothing to be done. There is no way, the doctor said, like I had asked for world peace instead of medical treatment. <laughs> and he explained, these pills are $90,000. You have to be practically dying to be approved. Come back in a few years. Now, I personally have not died myself, but I think it's safe to assume it's not fun. Um, but death from Epsi is particularly awful. You die scared and confused as poisons that your liver would normally filter out impact your brain. You die yellow with jaundice, with your belly distended like you're nine months pregnant. You die drowning in your own fluids. And I needed to get closer to that if I wanted to be treated. I went home and I cried for about two days, but I just got back to the life I'd always known. I focused on raising my sons. I bought a house and I started a writing career. I became known for my frank and open style about, you know, really personal and tough issues, you know, that walking over share thing, but paid. <laughs> and even though I was known for this, not once did it occur to me to write about my head C. And the more well known I became for being open and honest, the more terrified I was that people would find out 
but I have been lying. It's kind of ironic that as I began to be known for my wit and my wisdom, that the dreaded hep C brain fog would set in. A lot of people who have been suffering from this disease from a long time start to suffer in neurological impacts. My anxiety and depression increased. My ADD became completely unmanageable. And I couldn't remember words. I would stare at sentences for minutes that felt like hours trying to remember what I was trying to say. And I couldn't read anymore. I hadn't read a single book in three years. And I was scared to tell anyone. But it wasn't until the physical effects set in that I realized I had to do something. When my hair started breaking off and my joints started hurting and I spent way too many nights on WebMD saying, why do my feet itch all the time? That I realized I had to be honest. I had been tested for just about every other possible medical cause for these ailments, but I finally had to say to my doctor, I do think this is my hep C. Now my doctor, this is the same doctor I had called 15 years earlier when I got the letter. I prepared for her to tell me there was nothing to be done, but instead she lifted her eyebrows and she said, huh, why haven't we treated you for that? <laughs> notification of approval of my treatment was really just as hilariously unremarkable as notification of my illness had been. I got a call from an 800 number and an automated voice says, your prescription request has been approved. Thank you for doing business with us. And that was it. I, I honestly thought it was for a change in my ADD meds. I was like, okay, whatever. It wasn't until the next day that I realized it might be for this treatment. So I called the insurance company and I waited on hold for 30 minutes while they looked through all the records and finally a guy said, oh, I'm seeing an approval for a Harvoni? That's a really expensive medicine. And I thanked him, and I hung up the phone, and I cried. I cried more than I ever knew was possible. I cried for 15 years of pain and shame and fear that I was going to be free of. But that elation didn't last long because we live in the internet age and I immediately started Googling what's the worst thing that can happen to you if you take this medicine. <laughs> and I realized that while most people were just fine, a not insignificant amount of people had really disastrous side effects. Some people even died and I was scared. But finally, I had had enough I had lived with this disease alone for 15 years. I was not gonna go through the treatment alone as well. So I gathered up whatever courage I had left and I did what you do nowadays, which is I got on Facebook and <laughs> I made a video on a Wednesday at midnight, <laughs> friends only, and I explained what I had been living with and the treatment I was going to be undergoing and how scared I was. And then I just went to bed. The next morning when I logged on and I realized that people weren't condemning me, they were in fact concerned and loving and some were really excited that I was going to get the treatment I needed. I made it public. Just like my fear of people's responses. My fear of treatment was overblown as well. I was sick for one day and then I was fine. In fact, I was better than fine. I was thinking more clearly than I had in years. And I was also seeing this disease more clearly because once I came forward, other people came forward as well. People I had known for years started telling me about their moms, their dads, their aunts, their uncles who had died from this disease. People told me how long they had been keeping their diagnosis a secret. One woman told me about how even on her mom's deathbed, she refused to let anyone know what was killing her. There are 3.5 million of us, and we shouldn't have had to be alone. But we weren't just hiding from society. We were hiding from each other. I am one of the lucky ones. I have been approved for treatment. I'm about halfway through. 
I don't know if it's working, but the odds are definitely in my favor. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna be sad. I might be devastated, but I won't have to go through that alone. For 15 years, I was dying alone. But now, even if this disease does kill me, I get to go out yelling and laughing and crying with my friends and my family and my whole community. And that, my friends, is actually living. Thank you.